thank you for agreeing to meet with me today. I just have a couple questions that I will be asking you about the case of Claire Jensen. Of course, let me know. Okay, so when did you diagnose Claire with AML? Um, I diagnosed her in November of 2016. Great, and how long had you been treating her before the diagnosis? About six years. Okay. So, what did you notice when you first diagnosed her? Like, what were the symptoms of AML? Um, she had some abnormal bruising on her abdomen. She was fatigued a lot, trying to stay in bed whenever she could. And although she was living an active life, she still would have trouble running up and down the soccer field. Okay. And how did the official uh, diagnosis work? Um, we took a sample of her blood and her bone marrow, and we found myeloid cells that appeared to be cancer. Okay, and how did you go about the start of her treatment? As I know, um, the diagnosis was devastating for her and her family. Yeah, it's hard for any family to get that type of diagnosis, so we set them up with a counselor, and throughout all their treatment, they go and see them. But other than that, she went through two sessions of chemotherapy, and as of right now, we're considering a bone marrow transplant. Okay, thank you. And what were the sort of symptoms she was experiencing through her, her chemo? Um, she experienced a lot of the symptoms that included brittle nails and hair loss. Okay. So what was your initial reaction when you first found out you had AML? I honestly was kind of shocked. I mean, nobody really expects that they're going to be diagnosed with cancer, especially somebody who was active and pretty young. So I think that it was kind of hard to hear in the beginning. I've had a really good support system throughout the process so far, including my family and my friends. So that's been good to kind of help deal with hearing that. But at this point, you know, I mean, I just know that I'm going to fight as hard as I can and I I don't know I'm just gonna try and stay strong okay so what were some of your symptoms that made you um, go and seek help okay yeah so I have played sports my entire life and it got to the point where I couldn't run up, run up and down the field sorry without feeling tired, exhausted. I felt like I was just going to collapse. I wanted to sleep all the time and I was having a really hard time getting up for school. Um, my grades definitely started suffering and I've always been a good student so my parents were a little bit concerned when all of that started happening and then I noticed I would bruise really easily on my body and that was kind of a warning sign, but I never really expected AML. I just thought I was tired. Mm -hmm. um, if you could say anything to other people that have AML, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they should keep fighting and stay strong and that you can get through it. A lot of people do. And just to kind of realize what's important in life because you never know how long you have. Okay, thanks. Hey Charlotte. Hi. Um, I just have a couple questions for you about your friend Claire. Okay. So how are you doing today? It's been pretty hard um, since she passed away. What's okay. your reaction when she was diagnosed with AML? I was pretty crushed. I didn't really know a lot about the disease so I didn't know what was gonna happen to her but so I kind of like went through it with her and like did you notice any physical symptoms or changes in Claire's personal life and physically um, she seemed pretty tired all the time and I noticed in our classes that we had together she wasn't really like focused and like passionate about what we were doing like she normally was and she seemed kind of distant from her friends. Do you feel like your friends were there for you and her friends were there for her? Our friends were definitely all in it together and kind of helping her through her whole 
journey. Hi, thank you for agreeing to meet with me today. Sure, my pleasure. So I just have a couple of questions for you regarding Claire and her family upon receiving the diagnosis to the date of her passing, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to start things off, um, what was her family like when they received the diagnosis and you started caring for them? I think any time when you are delivering such news to a family and helping them cope with something of this magnitude, it's um, a process and I think that um, for them to begin to understand, work through how their lives can be after the passing, but just also how to deal with the time that they have because they still have a lot of days together before um, they, the passing. So this way they can kind of maximize that, dealing with the situation and then also what their lives can be like afterwards. Great, thank you. Um, what about Claire specifically? Did you see her emotionally change at all from the beginning to the end? Or what did you most recommend to her throughout the process? I think with Claire specifically, she the news came, obviously it was devastating in the beginning. And I think that there was a lot of anger and frustration and why me? And once you kind of work through the stages of, you know, it's actually like, grief going through this in the beginning that once you start to process it and then um, realize, you know, again, just sort of enjoying the time that you have and um, what your legacy will be like, even though her life was short, this kind of helps bring the um, closure not only for herself, but also for her family and friends. Yeah, and her parents too. I know you spent a lot of time with them before and especially after her passing. And what was that like? I think we're still obviously going through this and they obviously, it, there's a lot to um, you know deal with. Again, there's also the blame and the feeling guilty as well. But I think for the most part, they are a strong family and continue to build and um, want to help others at this point, you know, in their grief. So they've also are working on some different um, programs and just really being a support system for other people as well. Wow, awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, thank you for agreeing to meet with me this one last time. How are you today? Doing well, how are you? I'm good. Okay, so one last question regarding Claire's case. Um, what made you decide that she was too weak to continue treatment? Well, we were going through the bone marrow treatment and it was about um, two weeks before she ended up passing away and the results that were coming weren't coming fast enough. She really wasn't getting any better. She was just getting weaker and weaker. And so we decided um, that it would be better to end treatment and let her last days be ones that she was fully her and she could fully be with her family and friends. Okay. So how are you feeling right now? I'm okay. <clears throat> um, how would you like to be remembered? Um, I just want to be remembered as being an inspiration to people because what I've gone through is so hard and I just hope that people remember that I didn't stop fighting and I wanted to be there for them as much as I could throughout the process as people were for me and I just want to be known as making my last days the best days of my life.